For years, the world has been dealing with a retail apocalypse. This is a reference to basically all the retail stores that have been closing thanks to Amazon.com and other online competitors. However, could a restaurant apocalypse be just around the corner and could Postmates, DoorDash, and Grubhub be contributing to it? Xbox, Twitter, Uber, Postmates, Monday. Netflix, MoviePass, Lyft, Google, Facebook, eBay, DoorDash, Apple, Amazon, Airbnb, The Apptrepreneur. Hey everyone, this is Kevin, the Apptrepreneur, and here and we've talked a little bit, not much, but a little bit about the retail apocalypse. Um, mainly when I tell people that I am always sad that a certain store is disappearing. I don't like when Toys R Us goes away. I recently Dimple Records in Sacramento is going to close, and I am definitely going to miss that store. And I kind of bemoan the loss of malls, not necessarily because I prefer shopping at malls as opposed to just buying something and getting it at home a couple days later for free. I bemoan it because I remember having memories of hanging with friends and hanging with my dad and my brother. We'd, we'd go to the mall and it would be a place to hang out. And once in a while you buy something. And I kind of think something in that is being lost. Well, one of the big social things that have basically not been interrupted, if you will, by technology has been restaurants. But... As Postmates is just about to go public, we are finding reports that the restaurant industry and all the social implications that come with going to the restaurant could be in very real danger because of, well, you guessed it. However, before we talk about any of that, let's have a word from our sponsors. Times are changing for gig workers and the gig economy, and there are a lot more gigs from a lot more companies than there used to be. That's why when people ask me where they can go to find resources for the gig economy, I recommend gigworker.com. At this site, you can see what other gig workers are doing and discover better opportunities from industries, companies, resources, and, and even a forum where you can talk with other people in the gig economy. Gigworker.com is a great resource site, whether you work for Uber, Lyft, Postmates, DoorDash, Tax, Rabbit, Thumbtack, Upwork, whatever, there's a gig for you and there's a forum for you on gigworker.com. Gigworker.com for all your gigs. So the first part of our story today is actually this. Food delivery app Postmates plans to file for an IPO in September. The company was most, most recently valued at $1.85 billion. So on-demand food delivery app Postmates is on track to go public before the end of 2019. The buzzy startup is planning to publicly reveal its IPO filing in September, setting it up to debut on public markets in the third quarter of 2019, according to a TechCrunch report Monday. The filing will be the first look at the company's financials. Postmates was most recently valued at $1.85 billion and has risen, a, raised a whopping $681 million in private venture funding since 2011, according to PitchBook data. The startup confidentially filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in February. Now, one thing that we should note about this is like, there was rumors that Postmates was considering putting them also for sale. Uh, this does not appear to be the case. It appears that they will be going public and will be their own company at some point. There, um, a, spokes, a Postmates spokesperson declined to comment on the IPO process. A current Postmates investor confirmed to business side that the company was in pre-IPO quiet period. The report comes on the heels of competitor DoorDash's $410 million purchase of caviar from payments company Square on August 5th. The market for on-demand food delivery has taken center stage ahead of rumored public debuts from Postmates and DoorDash, but reports have also placed scrutiny on how the companies pay its drivers. Yes. Now, here's the other thing. This is not the only um, the o the only thing that Postmates has done the last week. They have also acquired a permit that will test delivery robots on San Francisco sidewalks. San Francisco might soon see Postmates' cute delivery robot, which I call the Wally personally, um, rolling down their sidewalks. According to TechCrunch, the Food and Groceries Delivery Service has secured what could be the first permit allowing sidewalk robo robotics operation in the city. Postmates introduced the big-eyed Wally-like serve in December, revealing its plans to send the robot with your orders to your homes and offices. You'll be able to unlock its compartment. It can carry up to 50 pounds of goods and for up to 30 miles on a single charge using your phone or a code the service gives you. If you and so, yeah, this cute little guy might be on the road soon. 
And obviously, if you are a driver that's concerning, you might potentially lose your, your job. Although, personally, I don't see that happening. I mean, these things are cute, but again, you put them on the road, especially someplace like San Francisco, where the, the streets and the sidewalks are fairly crowded and you have a lot of disaster. However, these two things come on the heels as the restaurant industry starts facing a restaurant apocalypse and... Well, this is what we're really going to talk about today. Given the rise of delivery app use, many restaurants are choosing to do away with tables and chairs entirely, according to the New York Times, not TechCrunch, the New York Times, although TechCrunch is a reputable source. Since restaurants pay delivery apps high commission fees, doing without rent helps businesses save money. But no physical restaurant also means no wait staff. Restaurants in the city tend to spend one-third of the revenue on labor, according to The New Yorker. While restaurants have long advocated against minimum wage hikes for the job cuts they say the move would cause, apps like Uber Eats and Grubhub may play a role in reduced restaurant employment. We saw a direct correlation between the delivery services and the reduction of our income, a restaurant owner who closed two locations after employing delivery apps told The New York Times. It was like death by a thousand cuts. For the most part, food delivery in the U.S. still occurs directly through the restaurant. That means patrons call up a Domino's directly and an in-house employee delivers the pizza. However, the third-party delivery apps like Uber Eats and Postmates, which any independent contractor can sign up to deliver for, have gained popularity in urban areas and among younger clients, according to eMarketer. The data company found the global downloads of the top five delivery apps grew 115% from 2016 to 2018. Now, that's a shock to me. I, I didn't realize it was that much. That's, uh, I mean, yeah, look, I, <laughs> I understand. Like, ever since Amazon came around, delivery has kind of been the future. People don't want to leave their house. Heck, I even saw, like, a meme one time that said doing nothing is older people's drug like basically how you know young people go out and they do drugs for fun like and they get like a high off of it like the older person their high is to not go anywhere the meme had someone just sitting there with like an uber eats bag and a netflix account and kind of going like i didn't have to do anything today and so yeah I, things like this definitely contribute to to that i, I understand um, these apps are expensive for restaurants. Uber Eats charges restaurants a 30% commission all, all, on all orders. That means for a sandwich that sells for $17.50 and costs $5.50 to make, Uber Eats takes $5.25 extra sk uh, skift table? Interesting name. Skift table reported. It's really a business model that's bad for restaurants, James Perrot. Parrot, I think that's his name, a director of economic and fiscal policies at the New School, told Business Insiders. Hopefully the industry will come to its senses and push those restaurant delivery services out of the picture because I have yet to see anything where it's positive for the restaurant industry. It helps crowd out locally owned smaller restaurants, which, uh, yeah, it, it's funny because like that totally mimics the Uber and Lyft experience if you stop and think about it because Uber and Lyft is pretty much bad for everyone except for Uber and Lyft. I mean, and customers, of course, because, yeah, customers get cheap rides, and they can pretty much get a ride whenever they want. They tap a button, they can call the ride, and yet for the drivers, it's bad. They get screwed in the payment for public transit. You know, they get defunded for the streets in general, more crowded. Taxi, all those jobs are going away, and yet, you know, the Uber drivers lose money. Everyone else gets more traffic. And Uber just collects money. And by the way, once they really need to make money, then those passengers, once they've conveniently killed all those other services because Uber and Lyft were so much cheaper, they're going to be paying the price for that. So, yeah, you know, these companies, they're just bloodsuckers, really, when you get down to it. Delivery apps like Uber Eats contend that they are helping restaurants by offering more opportunities to give customers food. You know, I'm going to have to take a step back a little because if you go look way, way back, like a few years ago when I first started doing this and restaurants were starting to complain about these delivery apps, I actually made videos basically telling them to get over themselves. Like all you're doing is you're selling more food. And this is why you're, it's always good to read. It's always good to learn. It's always good to have an evolving 
opinion on things because I was not aware of exactly how high the fee was. I did not consider the fact that with restaurants delivering so much food at one point and so few people coming into the store that, hey, you know, you've got this big Denny's restaurant. Why don't you just move it to this little, um, you know, studio size location, hire a couple chefs just to make food and hand up delivery drivers and fire all the waiters, the dishwashers, all that stuff. Why don't you get rid of those jobs and downsize? I never thought about things like that. And now that it's showing up more and more and you start hearing these things, I'm kind of looking back and like, well, maybe the restaurants had a point. And then of course, if you're like a if you're like a mom and pop restaurant, you you can't always afford to downsize. I mean, it it sounds kind of weird like, well, why couldn't you afford to downsize? Like, no, they they built that restaurant. They can't just willy-nilly move. Like they their whole thing is the experience. Like what happens to restaurants, for example, like the Rainforest Cafe, which sells at best average food. At best average food. And yet, when you go there, it's an experience. It's a wonderful ex- experience. It, you you feel like you're dining in a rainforest. They've got the trees, the sounds, the waitresses all have the costumes. It, it's wonderful. And yet, if you, they start delivering more food than people are coming in, they might actually lose a lot of business because people realize the food isn't that good. It's just the experience, but... Who wants to go out to eat? So I can understand now a little bit more where the restaurants are coming from uh, a few years ago. A San Francisco restaurant owner told the Times that he had hired one other employee to keep up with the increased Uber Eats demand. The company had worked with him to create a virtual restaurant. Why would a restaurant be working with us if we weren't helping them increase their orders? Janelle Salvano, who leads Uber Eats in North America, told the New York Times. Business Insider had reached out to Uber Eats, Postmates, and Grubhub for comment. While Par- Parrot couldn't find a direct link to delivery services and restaurant employment, so, you know, this is something to keep in mind, he called third-party de- delivery apps a factor in eroding restaurant employment. He did find that the New York City's minimum wage hike had little impact in employment, consistent with reports out of the University of California, Berkeley, and the University of Washington. So even he's admitting that... And we need to, of course, say that he couldn't find a direct link to delivery services and restaurant employment. So we have to keep that in mind. Parrot also mentioned app delivery people who technically work in the restaurant in- industry are not counted in overall government employment statistics about the restaurant's industry because they're independent contractors. When compared to full-time restaurant jobs, delivery gigs tend to be dangerous and the pay shaky. The New York Times found delivery apps like DoorDash keeps workers tips. The company later revised its tipping policy. Yeah, but I don't think we know what it looks like yet. A dissertation out of out of uh, CUNY, is that it? Um, found in New York City's delivery people tend to be Latino or Asian immigrant men working in unsafe conditions. In the last few years, restaurant owners in New York have begun calling out food delivery apps for hurting their business. The city council recently held a hearing on the impact of restaurant delivery services on the area's hospitality industry. There's a concern that it could be a system where the restaurant owners are trapped in an unstable, unsuitable business model that not only doesn't add to their bottom line, but could eat away at their profits and their ability to keep their doors open, said council member Mark, I don't, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry, at the hearing, um, as reported by Nation Restaurants News. And yeah, I kind of agree, because here's the thing, this 30%, this is, I think, what the restaurants have to fear most out of all of this, because here's the thing. Yes, let's acknowledge more food is being sold with these food delivery apps. That that is absolutely, absolutely happening. But here's the other thing, is that if you start firing waitresses and dishwashers, and you start going to smaller buildings, and you basically turn your restaurant into a virtual restaurant where people just pick up or get delivered. There's no dine-in sitting down, but most of the business is through Uber Eats, Grubhub, Postmates, DoorDash. I guess Caviar is going to become DoorDash soon. Um, Then what happens is that store becomes dependent on these companies. And let's kind of take a sidestep to Amazon, who has definitely been hurting the economy because Amazon is in a, and Walmart, because Walmart did this too. These companies 
um, were in pos have been and are in positions to basically name their price. And this is why monopoly laws might have to be reconsidered. Because right now, what is constituted as a monopoly, to my understanding, aside from just market share, is whether or not the customers are getting price gouged. Because when a company you know, gets complete control over the market, they typically price gouge the customers. That's kind of in common knowledge, so laws reflect that. But what the laws are not reflecting is in day and age where companies get monopolies, but they don't um, price pinch the customers. They price pinch the workers. They price pinch the suppliers. So when Amazon had like a disagreement with Hatchet Books, um, there was this happened like a few years ago, I think, maybe seven years ago at this point, where Amazon went to Hatchet Books and said, we want to pay this amount of dollars for your books. Hatchet said, uh, no, that is ridiculously low. You know, we can charge this much. And Amazon was like, oh, okay, well, it's a, oh, look at that. All the Hatchet books, um, they're off the site. We're no longer going to buy them until you agree to our terms. And Hatchet books lost millions of dollars. And they, by the way, had big authors on the payroll. They had uh, Stephen Colbert was one of them who actually um, gave Amazon the middle finger on a show that year. Now, Hatchet disputed it as long as they could, but ultimately, Amazon sells 50% of the books in America. And the sales loss was catastrophic. So they eventually, you know, shaved the price, laid some people off to cave to Amazon's demands. So you start looking at these restaurants now. Like Uber, like, okay, well, well Uber, I, think, I don't think anyone, but Uber especially does not play fair on this. And we've seen Uber raise... The booking fee, so they don't have to pay drivers. We've seen them fundraise. We've seen them fire people. You know, we've seen them squeeze the drivers dry and their employees too, to a certain extent. What happens when Uber, Postmates, and DoorDash become the companies that the restaurants have to depend on to sell their food? This 30% commission could become 45%. Maybe um, the per order fee that they charge the restaurants just doubles one day because, hey, you're depending on us to get your business, it creates a very unhealthy relationship. Like, once you start creating sub-businesses, um, or the main business has to go through in order to make money, then the sub-business holds the cards. And we've seen the way they treat the drivers, they're not going to treat the restaurants any better. So, I can definitely understand why this is becoming a problem. And then, of course, yeah, drivers... Oh, not that one. Drivers should be concerned because, you know, they still, Postmates and stuff still wants to get rid of them. But hey, if they can become the subcontractor, maybe this will become like a stock that's worth owning. Who knows? So any, But anyway, we're going to leave it right there. This is, uh, personally, I think it would be a shame, an absolute shame if the restaurant industry collapsed because of Uber Eats Postmates. I would probably become an activist myself at that point. Because, you know, last night we went to out to eat. And granted, me and Katie, you know, have been eating out a lot less lately, you know, just trying to control our money. But, you know, some friends said, hey, let's go out to Rodrigo's and let's eat. So we went to Rodrigo's and we ate. Now, granted, it was not a perfectly good experience. Um, the food took like almost an hour to get here because of a big party. One of the, our party members had to leave and not couldn't eat because of that. But hey, when the food arrived, it did taste good. And when I talked to the manager calmly but firmly that, hey, we weren't 100% happy with the service, we got 50% off. So we had a, ultimately we had a great time talking with everyone, got like a good meal, got 50% off because we were inconvenienced quite a bit. And it was a wonderful night overall, even with the problems. I mean, what happens when we get to the future where it's like, okay, we're, we're not going out, you know, we're not communicating anymore. And if there's a problem with the food, like we... You know, we can't talk to the manager and there there can't be that personal touch. I, I kind of wonder where, where this is all heading. It really is quite concerning. However, that's where we're going to end the story. This video ended up going a lot longer than I expected. I didn't realize I had this much to say about the restaurant industry and what Uber and Postmates are doing to it. So anyway, I would like to know, what are all of your thoughts on it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I would love to know. So comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. 
Also, if gas prices are getting you just a little down, check out the GetUpside app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. If you want to see more videos from me that's not right to related, check out my other YouTube channels, Kevin T. Rodriguez, The App Entrepreneur Vlogs, and Autograph Hound. And finally, if you want to talk to me or other fellow rideshare drivers out there, check us out at the App Entrepreneur Hangouts on Facebook. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.